are finding and developing top talent. We are uh, this uh, today's uh, broadcast is uh, provided by the Private Bank and Small Business Chicago uh, Group, uh, associated with the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. My name is uh, Dean Delisle, founder and CEO of Forward Progress, and we are proud today to bring uh, bring you today's curriculum on social HR and how to leverage social media and sort of. Of a sort of a new way of uh, uh, just using your social network and the power of your social network through your business and the people within your business to attract top talent and promote top talent within so that people can see a better company. Uh, before we get started, I just want to make sure I orient everybody to how to engage with the GoToWebinar interface. Um, you'll find that uh, there is a GoToWebinar taskbar, and everybody is muted so that we can get you a premium recording that you can follow up with your team afterwards. Uh, if you'll uh, notice that if you cannot see our slide that says how to engage with the GoToWebinar interface, you would simply click on the little flower or daisy at the bottom of your taskbar, and that would bring our slide and your control panel to the top. And to engage with us and ask questions, you just simply type into the questions area. So if you could, um, why don't you type into the questions area, who's your favorite sports team? Just type that in right now so that we know who we have with us, and uh, we'll uh, see what kind of team uh, camaraderie we have uh, on today's call. So go ahead and type into the questions area, and we'll make sure that you can find that questions area. You can ask questions uh, for the uh, through the entire broadcast. So we have some Hawks fans and some Cubs fans and uh, sort of a division of sports here and some Bears fans. There you go. So good stuff. Okay. So to kick off uh, today, we uh, I would like to introduce, uh, before we get started with curriculum, uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Tom Doherty from uh, the Private Bank. He's the Managing Director and Head of Business Banking for the Private Bank. Welcome, Tom. Thanks, Dean. So I thought I would just quickly kind of introduce the bank. You've, you've got a, um, a slide on there with a little bit of background on the bank, the size of the bank, and kind of what our, our mission statement is within the, uh, the business banking group. But just... Just briefly, kind of why we why we take on partnerships like this and why we think this is important. You know, we you can see the the size of our bank, a sixteen billion dollar bank in Chicago. We're we're very much a well known commercial middle market bank in the uh, in the Chicago and, and Midwest markets, um, and headquartered here in Chicago. But I think that what we've been focusing on over the last uh, several years is bringing that that same approach that we're well known for in the middle market space of true relationship management and a relationship approach to, uh, to our client and bringing that to a space that, that we think is, is in uh, really desperate need of that same kind of relationship approach. And that's the small business and kind of emerging uh, entrepreneurial marketplace in, uh, in this market. So, you know, we all have strategies you all do for your businesses. The question is how do you execute on that? And that's, you can see, we, we talk about in our our people, uh, from our, our, our different uh, model that we go to market with, we, we execute on differentiators in that through things like a team approach, with using your relationship manager, a portfolio manager, and a client specialist with all of our, our business clients, our entrepreneur business clients. But then more importantly than that, when we read surveys, and listen to what business owners are telling us, small business owners, that whether we think we have great products and services, really, and clearly we do, that we're, we're told over and over again that it's, how do you add value to my business? How, what can you bring to the table beyond what, what business owners view as a commodity, whether it be our checking accounts or lending products, things like that, but how can we add value to help you grow? And that's where we partner with Dean and the, the Chicago Chamber this year uh, to look at various seminars, webinars that we put on. And we put on a series of these, both in person and uh, webinars like this, um, in addition to uh, other differentiators we'd love to talk to you about. But that's that's kind of how we came about with this, as we believe in adding some education that's, that's beneficial. And, and this topic of human resources is one that, that we think that we hear often from our clients that uh, they'd like some information on. And social media is such a big topic that how do you connect those two? And that's where, where we connected with Dean and the Chamber to do that. You can see the, the slide now talks about our Small Business Resource Center. You can see the website there through the, the privatebank.com. Just another tool that we provide that we would welcome you to take advantage of. Go in there and, and look around. You'll see two of the things that, that we think are important that you can get access to in there. Uh, build, writing and building a business plan. 
which uh, I think is a, a tool we'd like to see more of our, our small business clients take advantage of. Things like cash flow forecasting, um, all those all those things that, that we think are helpful when you approach a bank, whether you're a startup or have been in business for many years, uh, the ability to to have knowledge around some of these these topics is is right there for you at your fingertips. And if you know, if you need any help with that, please feel free to reach out to, to any of us, and we'd uh, be happy to walk you through that as a demo. So with that, I'll turn it back to uh, you, Dean. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And one of the things I want to mention is what I like about uh, the private bank is the fact that you call uh, you call yourselves uh, relationship managers. And I think in today's world that's critical because we're talking about social media, HR, how to build a strong organization, how to connect yourself to the outside community. I mean, there's a lot of noise going on. So uh, in terms of social HR and recruiting, which the folks, you know, we're going to learn about here in a few moments, but the fact of how you guys have partnered, showing partnerships and, and collaboration online is a huge different way uh, of doing business. But you guys have always done it that way, so I just want to acknowledge you for that. So. Um, with that being said, uh, we also have uh, the Chamber with us today, the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce, who has been around for a long time, but yet they have a new small business uh, Chicago group. And I want to introduce Florence Hardy. She's the manager of Small Business Development Center with the Chicagoland Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Dean. So Small Business Chicago is a relatively new initiative that we have started here at the Chamber. And it's more of a folk, it provides a focus on our small business members. So those who have, uh, the, the federal government indicates those with 500 employees or less, but we look at those with 100 employees or less and try to provide events and programming that will help them in their business. One of the ways that uh, we make sure that we're meeting the needs of our small business members is we've done surveys over time and we've found that the chamber membership is actually made up of 60% of small businesses. So we, we want to make that a focus. We have made that a focus, and we do that through partnerships like this, as well as partnerships with other civic and entrepreneurial organizations throughout the city. Specifically, one of the things that we started doing is we have now a small business development center. And if you've not heard of those, those are federally funded and state funded entities. There are 36 in the state, and we have one house here. And we offer a range of services for businesses all for free. Uh, so we have the one-on-one -on -one business consulting where you have the opportunity to come in to speak with a business consultant about whatever issues it is uh, that your business is facing. We provide access to resources. We facilitate contacts. And in addition, we have a range of clinics that we're starting and have on hand. Right now, we already have a legal clinic where our law firm members uh, meet with our small business development center clients. And I should be clear that you can be a client of the center without being a member of the chamber. Um, so that is open to members and non-members alike. And coming soon, we will have a marketing clinic where you have the opportunity to meet with uh, marketing experts who can help you grow your business and your different target markets. Our one goal is to make sure that we provide whatever resources you need to grow your business. And I can't stress it enough that all of these services are at no cost to the business owner. That's amazing. <laughs> as, a, as a small business owner, Florence, I'm just like sitting here going, okay, so, and I'm, a, I'm also a, a, you know, a member of the chamber, so I'm thinking, all right, so now I have to take uh, more use of this service, so this is great. Nice job. All right, so uh, with that being said, uh, thank you, Florence and Tom, and let's go ahead and dig into it. So we have a lot of folks on with us today, so let's dig in. And what I want to encourage everybody to do is I know a ton of small business owners, maybe you're in charge of recruiting, maybe you're in charge of the whole business, but what's important is that you take notes. You're going to hear things that might be familiar to you as we talk through them, but remember that each and every person has their own unique starting point, and we've trained and coached almost 100,000 people here at Forward progress and the one thing that we see is that everyone's in a different space because this grows so fast and there's so many moving parts so we're going to empower you with some cool things that you can do so the first thing we want to know is if you could just type into the questions area uh, in terms of your organization you know where do you stand in terms of social networks so what is the most prominent social network that you guys use uh, for your company right now so is it LinkedIn you know we're talking about LinkedIn today but maybe you're more of a Facebook shop or an Instagram shop and and so we want you to understand that you can do recruiting not just in LinkedIn but use it in a lot of different 
areas of social media. So I want you to hold that space too, but also chime in and tell us like what's your top social media usage within your organization, just so that we can see. So we have a lot of LinkedIn folks. Uh, some Facebook, uh, looks like Twitter as well, um, and then uh, good stuff. Thank you, everybody, for participating in that. So, and in here, don't forget, uh, those uh, folks that are just joining us, make sure that uh, you find that questions area in the GoToWebinar taskbar. That's where everybody's responding, and we don't want you left behind. All right, so one of the things, just like I was talking about with, uh, you know, reference to, to Tom and the private bank and, and Florence with this new initiative, is the fact that, that the reason – they don't work, right, why it doesn't work, and we walk into a ton of small businesses, a ton of organizations, is just the mindset, right? The mindset is like, oh, if we're going to hire people, we have to buy ads. If we have to, uh, if we want to recruit, we, we have to use a recruiting firm. Now, we have a lot of friends that are recruiting firms, and we're not telling you not to. We want to show you some ways around that. But let's give you a little sense for what social HR is first. So it's a culture of, of social networking and social networks. What does that look like? That looks like everybody inside the company is connected and everybody outside the company is connected. Now I'll dig into that a little more. There's usually some level of governance or policy. You know, what uh, code of conduct? How do we act? How do we behave? And then from a social HR perspective, there's the recruitment that we're going to talk about today, employee development, as well as training and, and engagement. Now, when we think about that, it's super important that we understand that, you know, recruiting isn't just an external function, it's also an internal function. So we'll talk about two different angles here, because if we get the internal part right, the external part becomes easier, and that's why we talk about all these different levels. We want to help you change the organization so it's not just a single single person, but it's a combined effort, and leverage everybody within the organization. We also want you to understand that, you know, in terms of how this works, it's all about building trust, right? So if I, if I trust you, I'm going to rely on that referral from you. I'm going to understand that when I say, hey, I need a, I need a new IT manager, I need uh, somebody in sales, and, and you're going to count on the fact that you're going to listen to and talk to people that you trust. And we, you know, think about, uh, you know, some of the main things about this is the fact that we want to make sure that people understand how easy it is, but don't take it for granted. You're truly building trust in relationships. Just like I talked to Tom about the one thing I always liked about private bank is they have relationship managers, and they focus, study, and train on better ways to build that trust and relationship. And, and Florence, the same way, you know, with this new division at the chamber is huge. Now, what is the real impact, right? So so where do we get, you know, sort of the uh, uh, the, the impact of this? Well, if I connect to Tom, right, so if I connect to Tom and I, and I you know, build some trust with him, uh, I'm going to hopefully get some referrals from Tom's network, right? So in this diagram, I'm connecting to Sue, and I'm hopefully, uh, after enough interaction, I'm going to get together with Sue. Now, who can tell me how many interactions does it take for, for me to build trust with you, right? So when you go and you meet somebody, how many cups of coffee, those Starbucks cups of coffee, how many phone calls does it take on average uh, for someone to build trust with another person to get the very best referral or to get the business? So can anybody tell me that? So, yep, so I have some people coming in at six, five, seven, eight. The global average is 7 to 10 to build trust. Now, what we look at is if you connect on LinkedIn and look at the dynamics here, with just 387 connections, you have 6.4 million professionals. And so we're going to give you some ways to just sort of easily you know, tap into that network and build that trust and have an interaction or engagement that could count as one of those 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 interactions or those cups of coffee. We still want you to have the face-to-face, -face, but what if we can supplement some of that? Now, the two main areas today are finding top talent and developing top talent within your organization, making you a stronger company. So what we want you to understand first is there is a little science behind this. So as we studied 
cultures of successful organizations that attracted top talent and that had top talent on the inside, right? Because you walk in, you know when a company's rocking and they have the very best people because you see the effect on the outside, right? It's an internal, external type thing. And that attracts better talent. So there's a whole network science behind this. And if you want to study more on this, you just can Google Network Science U.S. Army. But let me explain how this works in terms of how we're connected so that you don't have to spend so much money or work so hard to get the next piece of talent or to attract the next piece of talent. So there's two factors to network science. One is external. So if you're sitting here and all of a sudden you build a, a strong company, like I said, people on the outside are going to get an impression of you. As a matter of fact, I took this Silicon Valley map from LinkedIn as a company and there's a ton of startups. I don't know if you've ever been to Silicon Valley, but it's filled with small businesses. And so we go there at least four times a year and, and we not only talk there, but we also so engage with the companies there, and we're like, what makes this culture different? How did they get these top people to show up and, and be great marketers with them, or how did they hire those programmers or those salespeople? Well, they do it through their social network. They create a strong internal culture, and I think Silicon, you know, a lot of companies are getting better at this, but Silicon almost has this natural thing to it, so we studied, like, what made them so strong? Well, we found that, that they attracted people from the outside because the people that came from the university stayed connected. The people that, you know, even if even if they dropped out of Harvard like Zuckerberg or, you know, some of the others, they, they still stayed connected, right? And so what they did is they, they attracted that external, you know, that external network of resources. So when they needed somebody, they, they found them, you know, they were found. And that's what we want to show you a couple things in LinkedIn of how to do. Actually, we're going to show you a lot of things. But I just want you to understand the science before we get into the details of LinkedIn. Then there's the internal, which I think is one of the biggest, coolest things is the fact that even if you're a, a company of five, right, you can connect from an internal perspective, and that could give you super reach. You remember the, the degrees of separation? If you have you know, 300 people, you're connected to 6 million. Well, now all of a sudden, if you connect the internal forces and you need to recruit, and maybe you're the manager or the owner, and you're like, hey, we need a, we need a new bookkeeper. And you, all of a sudden you say, well, here's the job description. Can you guys uh, post this on your LinkedIn? And we'll show you some other cool places to put it. But can we start a conversation about this? And what does that look like? And all of a sudden you get referrals and recommendations on that. And for you, you know, Facebook folks, you know, we have people that do it in Facebook and Twitter. It, it's amazing in terms of how the network can work for you, especially if you have that trust established. So as long as you guys get this so far, I'm going to move into LinkedIn. But tell me that you get it up to this point. Just give me a yes in the questions area and then I'll know you're with me and nobody's left behind on this and please ask a ton of questions because this is cool stuff if you can't tell I get excited when I'm talking about this because I love when people come back and they go you're right I, I hired the best person ever through our social network it came in as a referral you know through one of my sales reps or whatever whatever that can be right and you build a stronger organization inside the company okay so we want that for you too so think about this. I'm going to give you nine things, but I only want you to like pick the best one. You, and we'll give you the slides and the recording and all that stuff. But as you're taking notes, right, so, so just take notes on what applies to you. I don't want you to like try to absorb everything because I'm going to give – there's something for everybody in here, but I want to give you at least the pieces. And I, like I said, everybody's at a different point, so I pick nine things. And I was deciding last night, should I give them all nine? But I'm like, yep, you know what, we're going to cover them quick, but right down the ones that apply to you, okay? So the first thing is to educate, right? So, you know, we have an educational platform. The chamber does some education at, as well as, as you saw, and so does the bank, right? The bank educates you from a consultative standpoint. So however you partner to get the education, and today there's a ton of education. We do free or sponsored webcasts like this, and there's YouTube, and it just amazes me what we learn off of YouTube, but you want some structured training. You want to do it as a team. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you have pilot groups, or you have champions, or you have a department, but don't make it one person's function. 
work together as a team within the company. And I, and I don't care how small you are. And you know what? If you're a company of one or two, use your partners, right? Work together with what we call trusted agents, people outside the organization. You don't need to be a big company to practice social HR and get good recruits. You just have to be in relationship, build the trust, and be connected. Okay, so step one is, is don't give up on education. I know we're busy. We're working hard. We're tired. I work a lot of hours, too, as a small business business owner, but don't give up on, and you guys have proven it because you showed up to this and you're educating yourself, but we want you not to give up, but do it as a culture. So, and, and I, I think I had some of you that were telling me and say, hey, we're going to listen to this in our conference room. Good. Take notes and then take the next action of what you're going to do, right? All right. Step two is you got to look good. Right, so one of the things that people judge when they're going to work somewhere is they will go to the website, look at people, and we do this. We track, you know, we teach this at, at universities as well as within companies. And when people are looking to make their selection, because good talent chooses where they're going to go, they don't just have one choice. They have three, four, five choices to pick from. How are, how is the best talent going to choose you? Well, they look at what the company looks like, and today's world is different. It's not about the it's not about the website. It's about it's about the team that they're going to be connecting to. So what they do is they look at the website, they look at the people, and then all of a sudden they start looking at the people they're going to potentially work with. Oh, you're going to be in the sales department. Well, what do they do? They go into LinkedIn and they go to some of the social networks and even into Google, and they'll type in the company and they'll type in somebody that's on the website or somebody they believe they're going to work with. Um, they will type in, uh, you know, they'll type in um, other people, the company, they'll look at the owners, the executive team of the company. And if it looks a little uncertain or unclear, they're going to make judgments, right? So that's what we want you to do. We, and, and you know what, this works from a marketing and sales perspective. So not only do you get social HR, but you get like the marketing and the sales on the inbound side too, because you attract more people. You're clear about what you do, you're professionals, and you attract the people. Okay, so that profile is like the first thing. It's like getting dressed for the interview or the networking event. You want to look good. So what are some things that can sort of be indicators to know that you're attracting the right people? Well, the one thing is LinkedIn has this cool thing about who's viewed your profile, and there's recruits that are in here for you, right? So there's people that are looking at your profile. Maybe they want to work for you. Maybe you interview them, right? And so you can actually see if you're attracting the right people. And there's a couple different levels, but one is um, you can see, you know, who's checking you out. What are their titles? You know, there's 53 viewers with the title salesperson. We were recruiting for salespeople. Well, guess what? We just did a little bit of this, and all all of a sudden, I had 53 uh, viewers that had the title of salesperson, right? So we were looking for sales reps. So you see here on the left-hand side what your viewers do, right? There's a salesperson. There's some business owners that were coming in for one of our business owner workshops. Uh, there's a founder and a partner. We were working with some different firms that had founders and partners, and we're always looking for good marketing specialists, right? So here I'm optimized, and I'm looking for the right folks. And on the right-hand side, am I attracting the right, you know, areas of business. We do a lot of work with banking, financial services, associations, and I get my marketing and advertising groups here, IT groups all the time, professional training and coaching, and financial services. So I'm pretty much in my wheelhouse, but if I have a special sort of need coming up, I want to make sure I'm talking to that target and pulling them into my profile, as well as the rest of the team. So we'll sit down and have a team meeting, bring this up and say, okay, everybody, we put the, you know, sort of the notes out about that we're recruiting and this is who we're interested in, are we attracting the right people? Okay, so this is a cool area. Please don't overlook this. It's easy to get to. It's right at the top of your profile. And when you go to your profile, you just click. Actually, you don't even have to. It's on the home page now that you just click and say, who's viewed my profile? Now, on the free version, you can see um, sort of the last, um, I want to say it's the last uh, nine people that viewed your profile for that day. And then, you know, every day, if you pay, uh, which I don't, uh, you, you can see uh, more people that have viewed your profile specifically and then follow up with them about the recruiting option. 
okay, you know, coming to work for you. So the other thing is making sure that you have controlled profiles. So just like I talked about in the beginning, one of the things that people overlook is that you should uh, determine what's the elevator pitch for that team or that group or the company, and, and at the experience level, the people that are in the same area of experience should have a very similar sort of description to who they are, but the summary is the differentiator. So that summary is one of those places where you talk about yourself in first person. Okay, so you talk about yourself in first person, um, and it's really your elevator pitch and your unique value proposition. But in the experience and education, right, you can talk in third person, but you want to be as descriptive as possible about what you guys do as an organization. This will attract the people that are looking to work there. Because what they're doing is they're going, into, they're going into LinkedIn and they're typing in. Let's say Tom's looking for new relationship manager, right? And all of a sudden, you know, he has, the, he has the things in there, you know, in his profile that he's recruiting, that this is what they do. So as top talent is looking for a new place to make a shift, you know, Tom's goal is to make sure he gets to the top. So in his profile, you'll find that he's recruiting and, you know, he'll put keywords in there that those recruits might type in. And those go into that summary section. They go into the experience section. And people can easily find that profile at the top. And so that's what you want. If you're the one that's in charge of recruiting, in charge of hiring, you know, outside people or even inside people, if you're a big company, you want to make sure you're clear about that. You know, this is the, this is the talent that I'm looking for. If you're interested, contact me, right? And so that's where you would put that. Now, you can also have visual impact. So if you have a way to visually describe the organization, maybe you have a recruiting slide, maybe you have a best practices slide, maybe you just have a cool video that you want people to understand, right? So that is super cool. Um, Emily asked a great question. I'm going to take a bunch of these uh, questions at the end. So uh, actually... Uh, team, if you could hold that question. I love that question. Please. Uh, um, oh, that's it. Yeah. Amiku. Amiku. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll uh, make sure we get to that uh, question. All right. Cool. So make sure if you have anything visual, that's one thing that LinkedIn changed a couple years ago, that you can now have visual impact. You can take videos, PowerPoints, right? In fact, write down slideshare.net. Okay, slideshare.net is owned by LinkedIn now, and it's the largest social network of PowerPoints. Could you imagine that? Like, there isn't enough social networks. We want to make sure we have more. So, so write that down, slideshare. Actually, we'll send you a link to this slide deck, and you can get it off of uh, slideshare. And you can set up a free account, and you can upload PDFs. You can upload a slidecast where you can do voiceovers on slides. You don't even have to have fancy tools to do this, just PowerPoint and slideshare. And then it goes to your profile and it looks good right so your brand your image and people are like I want to work there because people aren't going to your website anymore yep they'll go to the website but they're they want to work with the people right so people good people attract people okay so is everybody with me and I we got a couple good questions coming in and we will answer all questions at the end even if we run a few minutes over Step three is connection, right? I talked to you about the power of connection, right? So now there is some etiquette. So depending on your organization, and you might be, we work with a ton of compliance. Uh, I came from Merrill Lynch. I understand compliance. I understand boundaries and all that other stuff. But, man, as long as people are trained and they, you know, that, that step one and they understand it, please let them connect to ideal targets, right? And this helps from a business development, customer service, relationship marketing, and social HR. It's like even a four for one, right? When you start reaching targeted people, that network becomes powerful. Because guess what? When you post that you have a job opening, more people see it. Right, so even if you were to just do the simple free post, you know, status update, which we'll talk about in a few moments, every connection has the opportunity to see it. And you can also target connections and direct message them. So you can say, you know what, can everybody reach out to, to five people in marketing that they think are good candidates and let them know we have a position open. And guess what? You'll get some of the coolest referrals. People are like, wow. And it builds trust with that relationship for you for other things down the road. So everybody get that? Everybody get the trust building and the connection part, right? That's super powerful. So, again, that's step three. And those of you, I had some folks that just joined us. We are recording for you, so we'll make sure you get the recording and the slides. 
So I want to make sure, you know, so we've covered three things so far, but part of this connection has sort of a, a secret hinge to it, okay? So remember I talked about mindset in the strongest organizations? The mindset is making sure that you connect inside the company, right? So inside first, then you go outside, okay? And outside, don't exclude anybody. If you have a new vendor or a partner, consultants, Maybe you work with recruiters. They have a massive network. You don't want to leave out your recruiters if you're working with recruiters. Connect to them on LinkedIn. They have a massive network of recruits, right, and you're working in partnership with them. Your consultants, your suppliers know people. So rather than picking up the phone and talking to 25 different people, you could simply do a post, and, and you could actually message people, or you could do a search in LinkedIn, pull those people up and send them a private message. So, you know, whatever that area of interest is, because everyone knows someone, and you know what? Everyone that's good knows good people, and those are the people you want to attract, okay? And again, so that's the inside adding connections, connect to each other, and then outside. Does this make sense? Give me a yes if you guys are following along, because I want to make sure before I get into these other steps that you guys are catching sort of the basics of the profile and looking good, right? And so, so again, you know, you may not be able to do all this right away, but we certainly want you to walk away with a couple of these things, okay? Remember when you connect to somebody, too, get on the personal side. It's crazy, because LinkedIn sort of moves things around. So I'll tell you the trick to this. So if you want to type a custom message, you know how people pop up in LinkedIn? LinkedIn and they'll pop up on the side and it'll say you might know this person or people you may know and you go, yeah, I'll connect to them. And then you're like, oh, wait a minute, I didn't even type a message. Well, people still like the personal message. Like I said, we've trained and coached over <laughs> close to 100,000 people. We're getting final coaches, this, you know, accounts this week. But we were just did a workshop and, and the thing was people were like, you know, I don't connect to people unless they, they give me a message and tell me how they want to, you know, how they want to get into a relationship. And we're seeing like this huge pattern. Everybody at first connected to everybody. Everybody. Now all of a sudden they're getting selective. They want good people because their inbox is filling up with garbage because they connected to everybody. And now they want to get back to just doing business in relationship with good people. Well, you be a good person and type that custom note. So you just have to go to their profile page and click connect from their profile page. Take that extra step, go to their profile page, right under their picture, it says connect, click connect, and it'll pop up with this box. You can say how you know each other, or if you have the business card, you can click other. Let's say you met them at a chamber event, there's no relationship yet, there's no other place to put it other than other, but you have the business card. You just have to type in the email email and type in a personal note. Okay? And LinkedIn says this is optional. I think they should make this mandatory because they, they punish you if you connect to too many people that report you that you you know that they don't know you. And so they will, you know, shut you down for that. We don't want you shut down. We want you connected, right? So be personal, reference however you met them. I met you at this great chamber event. I met you at one of the private bank functions. Include personal info, you know, and then set the appointment. Say, I want to get together and have that cup of coffee. And then add a phone number so that they know where to call you, right? So just remember that when you're connecting to somebody, you know, and, and, and again, always be recruiting. So you meet, you know, somebody good that's, that has a good network, say, hey, by the way, we're hiring. It's amazing sometimes that people will run tens of thousands of dollars worth of ads, but then they forget to use their social network, right? So use it in person and on LinkedIn here. So you want to make sure you wrap, wrap around, and if you meet five good people, but the one person that you connect to really makes sense, then you want to make sure you follow up with that person to help them maybe do a little recruiting through their social network too, right? So again, get into that partnership with them. Step four, right, is starting a conversation. When you post, you are talking. It's a conversation. So you have to be super careful that if you're not normally posting, actually, how often are you guys posting? Give me that real quick. So uh, just type in. I just want to get a sense for how often are you putting something up on LinkedIn? Is it once a week? Uh, never, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's never. Uh, sometimes it's once a week. Sometimes it's once in a while. So here's what you don't want to do. Okay, for the nevers and the once in a while, uh, rarelys, I got some rarelys, then I got one or two per week, is your network is conditioned to that level of conversation with you, 
right? So it's the equivalent of you having a targeted network walking into the room, right, and all of a sudden just shouting, hey, we're recruiting, and then you walk out. It's, it's the same thing with advertising and promotion. You don't want to be, you know, working with your network that way because there's no level of trust. There's no conversation. There's no connection built with those millions of people yet. So you want to warm up to a conversation. So before you start posting for new talent and, and requests, you want to get into relationship with the network and maybe post some news and, and let them get to know you a little bit and spend a couple of weeks doing that. And don't, you know, get crazy. You don't have to do like three a day or anything anything, maybe a few a week. And we always say use the five to one factor or seven to one factor where you're, again, depending on the network and depending on how frequent you show up, maybe you put five things of tremendous value up there and then you ask for the favor, right? So because if I come walking up to you and even though we've been connected for years and out of the blue I go, hey, listen, uh, you know, um, Lola, just because, you know, Lola, you know, I need a, I need a new salesperson. Do you know uh, where I can get a new salesperson? You're going to be like, what? Wait, who are you? Oh, yeah, that's right. We, you know, and so there's that awkward sort of kickstart of trust and conversation, right? So what you want to do is you really want to, like, get into that, you know, conversation with people first and maybe do some news postings, maybe even share some other postings, and then go and say, hey, I need some help. I'm really looking for somebody solid for our new sales department. Is there, you know, if you know of anybody, could you please send them my way? And it's a conversation, not a job posting, right? So you guys get the difference in that? So posting is a conversation. So that's part of your step four is our sort of social HR thing. So make sure you guys get that piece. Now, step five is for some of you. I noticed that some of you have a business page, and none of us are IBM, but I use IBM as the sort of general uh, viewpoint here. But you can actually post careers on a business page, on a company page. So you can set up a business page, and you do have to have an associated email associated with the domain to have a business page. But for free, you can list your career opportunities on your uh, on your business page and you can post on your business page so you can take the post on the business page and none of us have two million followers like IBM but even if you have 25 30 followers to your company they still have a social network you're still connected to millions of people just with those followers so you can post on your company and then you can take the company page and share it in the personal page. So again, even if there's only a couple of you, you still have that social reach. And now you're leveraging the business page plus the personal page, right? So the business play page plus the personal page. Now, step six, right, is what we call network diving. What if you just want to go hunt for the right talent, right? So what's sort of cool is they have an advanced people search. And, and this is like, a, this is like a, gen, a magic genie, I call it, right? So you can go in and you can look for people in the free version by industry, by title, by keywords, right? Let's say you're looking for um, somebody that's uh, – you know, vice president and somebody, you know, or maybe it's a, a CFO, you know, or, you know, maybe they'll have a CPA in their title and they're not a CFO yet, but you'll type in uh, in their title, maybe a CPA and you'll type in accounting and maybe cost accounting is important to you or whatever type of account, accounting person you're looking to hire. You would put those keywords in and what LinkedIn's going to do is it's going to take the keywords and it's going to go through your network to all your first connections, your second connections and everybody else, those group members that you're connected to in groups. And it's going to start hunting for that wish list. And then it's going to serve the wish list up to you, and it's going to tell you how you're connected. Again, the better you connect, remember step three, right? The better you connect to people, the more effective your network diving is going to be when you go hunt for them. And you might have the talent already at your fingertips without even posting. Like I said, you're all going to find the one thing today, right? I want you to find the one thing that you could do right away looking for that next top talent. So you can type in that role into those keywords. So what LinkedIn does is it sweeps through the titles. Maybe you're looking to hire people from another company. You heard that they're letting people go, and you could type in that company name. Um, maybe you're looking to hire alumni, and you want to put your school in there. You want to hire people from a certain industry. This is all within the free version of LinkedIn. And remember your first connections. You see the relationship up here on my screen where it says advanced people search. The relationships that are 
level one relationships, those are people that are directly connected to you. You can message them immediately. You can say, uh, you know, and again, just like I said on the posting, the other thing with connecting to somebody is making sure that you warm up the conversation. So what I do is I connect to people and I don't say, hey, I'm looking for someone if I haven't talked to them in forever, uh, or maybe they're a connection I haven't talked to. Say, uh, you know, what you do is you warm up to that person. You say, hey, we haven't spoken so long. I'd love to catch up. Let me know if you can. Gra you have a few minutes to uh, uh, to have a call to catch up, and you catch up and build the relationship first, then you go for the ask. And remember, that person has a whole network. So if you're connected to them, you can go to their profile on their page and see who you have in common, and in some cases, see their entire network. Okay, so that goes back to you know going in here and diving into your network and those second level connections are only one degree away. If you find the ideal candidate that's one degree away from you, LinkedIn will show you how you're connected to that person. And you simply click on that person and say, hey, Barry, you know what? It looks like you're connected to, to so-and-so. Uh, could you please uh, make an introduction for me? And again, warm yourself up to that talent that you're looking for. right? And those of you in sales, you can use this as a sales technique as well. All right? So is everybody with me on that? So everybody has us up to step six, and we'll recap these at the end, and please type in questions. I want to make sure nobody is left behind and all questions are answered. So I see some questions in here that we will take at the end during the Q&A. Nice job, everybody. Okay, cool stuff. All right, so group networking, right? So I mentioned groups before. Well, in step seven, you can join as many as 50 groups. So guess what? If you're in marketing and you're looking for marketing people, join the marketing groups. And don't forget your alumni group. Very powerful. You do have to have your university listed on your uh, LinkedIn profile or you can't join most alumni groups. Okay? So uh, the other thing is there is a jobs board in groups that lets you post for free. Did I say free again? So you can go into the jobs board in your groups and post for free. Right? So groups are just groups you belong to. The chamber has a group. All kind of organizations have a group. You just go to that board. It's where people network in specific groups. And there's a job board in there. And you can post for free. Right? You can also start a discussion about how to hire. Right? So another technique is to go in. You see where discussions is right next to promotions here? You can go into discussions and say, I'm really looking for some help to hire top talent in my sales department. I'm considering these as the top, uh, as the top characteristics. Um, can anybody uh, give me some insights on other things I should look for? You know, maybe just a genuine question of things that you've, had, you've needed for help, right, in terms of you want help, right? So it's pretty cool. Right. So uh, so now. Right. Um, thanks, Lola. We'll get that question, too. Uh, so now when you get into those uh, discussions, people are seeing your profile. They're seeing that you're hiring and you're in the dialogue. Right. OK, cool. So now all of a sudden uh, we are um, at that point. Right. Where now you can use your group whether it's an alumni group or it's the chamber or it's any other group you belong to in that targeted group to have a discussion about hiring. And then you can also post it, right? So another cool technique. And make sure you pay attention to how many people are in the group. And you can look, if you click on the little I in a group, it'll tell you how many people of that, um, uh, you know, uh, how many people are in there, you know, in that group and, and what kind of targets are in there. So maybe it's filled with marketing people. Maybe it's filled with vice presidents, right? So you can really target well. Um, eight is, uh, is, is in the job section, right? So now the one thing about the job section is that you can post and discover, um, you know, maybe competitively if your uh, network is, is uh, hiring. Now, you do have to, um, you know, you do have to pay for this in the job section, right? So when you go into jobs, right, you do have to pay for the job listings. But one thing I like about this is you can do a search for a role that you're looking for, and you can see who else is hiring. Well, because if, if you have a buddy in your network that's hiring at another company, they can't possibly, for the same position, they can't possibly hire everyone, 
Well, they have a bunch of resumes, and maybe they're like, hey, if you come across any good candidates, I'm looking for this type of person. Let me know because there's a 70% or is like 75% of the people that inquire on jobs, you know, inquire for jobs that, you know, aren't related to what the job request is in their talents. It's not a good match, right? So this way you can actually see within your network who's recruiting. Right, so that's sort of cool. You can actually see, oh my gosh, how am I connected to this job? I could talk to Rich and Robert, and I could talk to the person that's posting the job because I know the person, and I could get that help. Right, and then step nine is like the uh, ultimate in the recruiter tool. It's a little pricey, but those of you that do recruiting or a ton of recruiting, uh, you can contact people, uh, any candidate you want through InMail. Now you could buy the uh, business subscription or the upgrade to, to LinkedIn and do it this way, but they have a pipeline and there's a candidate search and there's all kinds of other features in there that you want to get, you know, that you want to be able to get into. So my my big question for you, and then we're going to take some questions here is all of the things that we talked about I want you to tell me the one thing right the one thing right so what's the one next thing you're gonna do are you gonna go to the educate are you gonna go to professional profile updates are you gonna go to just connecting better posting maybe starting a conversation posting on your business page a little more network diving seek and find uh, group networking Maybe you're going to check out the jobs thing or maybe the recruiter thing. So we got starting a conversation. Some people are picking educate. Some people are picking connect more. Some people are jumping in and saying network diving. They like the idea of network diving. Update the profile. I love that. Starting a conversation, right? That's cool. Jobs, right? Post and discover. The LinkedIn recruiter tool. There you go, getting aggressive. That's cool. I'd love to hear back from you on that. So cool. Nice stuff. Nice work, folks. Okay, so before I take some questions, I want everyone to think of the best question, okay? And at the end, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give away, I'm going to give away, um, I want you to uh, stump the expert here. I'm going to give away uh, two Starbucks gift cards at the end to the best question. Okay, so at the end, I'm going to take the best question, right, and I'm going to award two Starbucks gift cards at the end. So before we do that, let's hear from uh, uh, Tom real quick from the private bank, who we couldn't have done this without, you know, the private bank in the chamber. So, Tom, uh, so what do you think? Any, any last uh, words and some thoughts here uh, to the folks that are on with us today? No, just real quick. Uh, Dean, I appreciate you walking through this. I hope everybody, like I said at the beginning, got some uh, – got something out of this, even if it's one or two things that you can go back and execute on in your business, that's, uh, then I think it was a success. So I think the, um, you know, these, these last couple slides for us, again, just trying to provide you some tools to help. I, I really would encourage you to, to look at the resource center, some things out there. Some of the, the templates you'll, you'll connect to, uh, some Excel templates that from a financial management, I, I think, are pretty well done. So. Hey, look at that. The last thing Dean's got up here is this um, kind of an offer we have up there that, that's running right now. And it's just, you know, I think it's a way to introduce you to the bank if you're in need of working capital um, and, and or a, a loan to purchase equipment or if you've got some higher interest rate debt up there, kind of as a thank you for doing this today and, and, and you've given us a chance to show you not only what we can do for you on, on a product like this, but on the relationship approach I mentioned at the beginning, take advantage of this. I, I don't think you're going to find for small business an offer like this out there. And actually, um, if you have credit card debt, things like that, you'd like to, to pay off with a, with a line or a term loan here. Uh, you know, our lines up to 100000 for companies. This really is designed for companies with revenues, you know, up to a million dollars. We want to try and help out those small businesses. Uh, certainly, we'll, we'll entertain and, and, and give the best value on, and on the companies over that size also. But this offer in particular, it's for that. that uh, and we've actually lowered the rate on that offer also on the, uh, the up to uh, the five-year rate. And the three, you can see the three-year rate there is 3.5% uh, now, and the five-year rate is 4.5% uh, that we've just uh, lowered. If you get this, if you talk to us by the end of June, we'd like to be able to give you that offer, uh, again, as a thank you for participating and as an introduction to the bank. 
Yeah, thanks, Tom. And on the sc- on everybody's screen right now, if you guys want to talk to the one of the relationship managers, which I really encourage as a small business to do that, just click on you know there's on your uh, screen there you know there you know like Tom said, man, it's like for even smaller businesses, which I didn't realize until just now, Tom. So under a million dollar in revenue, you can get a loan up to a hundred thousand um, dollars. That's pretty cool. And then uh, and and the rates are lower. We always love the fact that when rates are lower, um, so now's a good time to, to jump on that. And so you can use this for any type of business expansion, right? So if I'm looking to, uh, you know, develop product, if I'm looking to expand on equipment, um, you know, and things like that, right? So there's a lot of different areas I could use this in my business. Yep. Okay, cool. So uh, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll take questions. Uh, please type questions in. Remember, we have some uh, Starbucks uh, cards we're giving away. So go ahead and uh, type in your best question. And real quick, we're gonna we're gonna hear from uh, we're gonna hear hear from Florence real quick, just uh, on the chamber. So uh, Florence, go ahead and uh, give us one last reminder of how you guys help us out uh, at the chamber with the Small Business Chicago. Thanks, Dean. I just wanted to say again that the Small Business Chicago Division of the Chicago Land Chamber is here to help business owners no matter the size. Uh, even if you're too big for us, which that may be the case, we have services at the chamber that may be able to help you if the Small Business Development Center is not able to provide you with assistance. But the type of assistance we do provide to small businesses includes that one-on-one -on -one business consulting, which most of the clients here take full advantage of. We provide access to those resources as well as clinics to get you the answers that you need when you need them. All of the services are given are free, so please do not hesitate to contact us for assistance. Yeah, and up on the screen, real quick, just for the Chicagoland Chamber, I have some selections up there. If you guys do want to, you know, again, this is all free, so if you want one-on-one -on -one business consulting or business development-related seminars and workshops, legal clinics, I'll be sure to contact you on the marketing, you guys have marketing clinics coming up uh, as well, and then uh, also there's mem membership uh, options at the end there, so again, in the questions area of your go-to webinar taskbar, I want to make sure that you guys type in your best questions, because we're going to be answering these questions in literally 60 seconds, and so again, I want to thank our folks at the um, the private bank, as well as the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Chicago. You guys are doing great things for us uh, folks here in small business. We need all the resources and help that we can get, so we appreciate you guys. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, take some uh, questions. So first we have Emmy. Uh, what is a good way to introduce yourself to people who are viewing uh, you're uh, viewing your profile and you don't actually have a uh, connection to them, right? So uh, what you can do, there's a couple different ways. You can view them back, okay? So you can view them back and when you view them back, um, you guys, uh, they actually see you, right? And they're like, oh, it's like when somebody walks up to you at a networking event and you're looking back at them. You ha also have the option to uh, connect to that person, right? If you want to, they're looking at you. If you want, you can you can boldly go into a connection with them. Now, you need some context of relationship before you make the connection. But remember I told you about the technique that as long as that person is a second-level connection, you can not, you can, you can, number one, a lot of times you can click on their profile and see their most recent updates and talk to them. But secondly, what you can do is you can go in and actually uh, connect to somebody that you know that knows that person and get an intro. So you can say, hey, look, I noticed that so-and-so from this location, from this office is checking me out, is looking at me. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you know, you can get that intro to that person. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Emmy, does that help you out? Great question. Another question we had, uh, looks like it was from uh, Lola. I have, uh, I have had many people uh, send me uh, an invite to join LinkedIn, but I always ignored the invite. I wasn't interested at the time. I'm ready now to join in, so how can I accept all of these people who had invited me? Great question. So uh, what you want to do is... Uh, is jump into, and again, we'll take a couple more questions here. We have a few more minutes. Uh, type uh, in any questions that you have. Um, 
uh, in terms of uh, going there, all you have to do is you can uh, you can actually go into your inbox and you can look at invitations, right? So if you go into your inbox and you look at invitations, it'll show you all the open invitations. Also, when you go into your inbox, right, and you go into uh, the top of your inbox, it'll show you either people you may know, but above the people you may know, it'll show you all the open invitations. So if you've ignored a lot of them, you might have quite a considerable list, but you can go in there and actually make up on those people now. So pretty cool. All right, any other uh, last-minute questions? Going once, going twice. All right, good. Well, hopefully everybody uh, learned something new. We have our two uh, question uh, winners here. We had uh, several questions in, but I'm going to actually pick as our winners today, Emmy and Lola. Congratulations. We'll be contacting you with your uh, Starbucks gift card, so use that on your next appointment when you're recruiting or hiring that top talent, so congratulations, folks. Um, yeah, you guys are excited. Nice job. Uh, so very cool. Now, the, the goal here is that we want you to engage with your network. So real quick, I'm going to put those nine things up on the screen, right? And a lot of you committed to what you were going to do next. But remember, just do one thing. Do one thing next, right? Do the one thing and then pick the next thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send you the slides. We're going to send you the recording and uh, sort of help you uh, take yourselves to that next level. And then you can come back to the recording and pick a second thing, right? So with that being said, uh, I just want to make sure there's no last-minute questions. Team, are we good to go? Good. Well, from the uh, private bank and the uh, Chicagoland Chamber Small Business Development Center, I want to thank everybody. And we'll look forward to seeing you all look amazing while you're recruiting and networking online to build a stronger company and a stronger team. So I want to thank everybody, and we will see you online. Take care.